be more detailed. We all got to have a, a better plan. Uh, not okay. You know I mean, straight up. As an offense, though, I mean, when you guys are only able to score three points, the defense only lets up three points. I mean, do you, do you feel like you let the defense down at all? No. No. Not, not going to fly. At this point, I believe I've seen enough to officially declare Zach Wilson to be a gigantic problem for the New York Jets. We've already seen it happen within the past couple of weeks. He's already had two of his wide receivers essentially demand a trade. And at that time, most of us were pointing the finger at them. Now he has multiple teammates that are reportedly upset at him for him just being completely oblivious to the fact that he is the problem. And believe me, based upon his statistical output versus the New England Patriots, I don't think that's a bold take at all whatsoever. We're going to break everything down, man. Before we get to the content, make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. If you want to go the extra mile to support this content further, then check us out on Patreon or our channel memberships program. Now that we get all of that out of the way, break! Since I live in California and California didn't pass the proposition to allow gambling in the state, I had to come up with an alternative to get some action in games. And luckily for us, prize picks is legal in California, Texas, Georgia, and in 70% of the United States. And right now is the perfect time to sign up with my promo code because not only would you get up to a $100 deposit match from prize picks upon using my promo code microphone, but in addition to this man, right in time for Thanksgiving, Giving, they're hooking us up fat. You see this bad boy over here, Justin Jefferson with 0.5 receiving yards? He only needs to get one receiving yard for this to hit. So I'm about to lock in my picks here, bro. Let's do Justin Jefferson, obviously more than 0.5. That's like a guaranteed win, which bear in mind, this is pretty much giving you a free win in any picks. Meaning I could just put that square and say CD Lamb over 70.5 yards. And if I hit on both of them, I triple my money. Now, I don't know how I feel about CD Lamb. I love CD, but recently he's been inconsistent. So I'm gonna give you a huge lock here, bro. I feel so good about this. Darius Slayton is gonna be able to play. Bear in mind, Wandale Robinson unfortunately is injured. Darius Slayton has had more on his projections for the past four games. I expect even more volume for him because Wandale Robinson's out. So dude, we're gonna pick more on Darius Slayton, more on Justin Jefferson. Screw it, we're putting 100 dollars in this one this is such a lock so use my promo code microphone to get up to a 100 dollar deposit match when you sign up for prize picks and thank you prize picks for the sponsor and this awesome promo mic check one two one two what's going on everybody it was just two years ago where the new york jets started the first 14 weeks of the season completely winless they were 0 and 13 for a period of time and it was quite the season to be winless i mean it's not like we were about to receive one of the most overhyped quarterback draft classes in quite some time with the likes of trevor lawrence mac jones trey lance and justin fields being hyped up at the time that the New York Jets were failing. And you might be wondering, Mike, why aren't you mentioning Zach Wilson? Zach Wilson didn't necessarily generate a ton of hype until after the regular season. At the time, everyone was saying one thing and one thing only, tank for Trevor Lawrence, which I'm not necessarily a huge proponent for tanking, but if you are going to tank with the intention of taking a specific player at a specific position, then just go all the way with it, man. Don't be terrible and and then decide to win a game or two and then end up with the consolation prize to the quarterback that you want to draft because that's essentially what happened to the new york jets initially my thought was they were content with sam darnold they would have probably liked to bring in a head coach just to see if another head coach other than adam gase would have worked with sam darnold but whenever you have the opportunity to take a player of trevor lawrence's caliber that might be just way too good to be true and you should hop all over that unfortunately Unfortunately for the Jets, they would win on December 20th versus the Los Angeles Rams, and then they would win again versus the Cleveland Browns a week later to bring their record to 2-14, and 14, which is good enough for the number two overall pick in the NFL Draft. Now, during this NFL Draft in particular, I wasn't necessarily sold on the idea that the New York Jets should draft the quarterback at the number two overall pick. At the number one spot, I totally get it. There's Trevor Lawrence there. You can't miss out on the opportunity to draft 
the next big once in a generation type prospect. But since they have the number two overall pick, my personal football philosophy has always been try to build the pieces around the quarterback before you actually take the quarterback. Meaning try to draft offensive linemen, try to draft wide receivers, try to make sure the other pieces are set. So you don't have to throw your quarterback into some sort of Justin Fields like situation where he barely has any pieces around him at all whatsoever and ends up struggling during the beginning of his career. Fortunately, Justin Fields has been able to turn it around, but I would have to admit I'm a little surprised given the situation he was placed in to start his career. But that's not what the New York Jets would end up doing. In a decision that kind of had me scratching my head from the very beginning, they decided to select Zach Wilson with the number two overall pick, a player that was supposed to have some of Patrick Mahomes' tendencies in his game, a player that has a cannon of an arm, although I rarely see it, and a player who was deemed to be a surefire upgrade over Sam Darnold. And the really cool thing about this is, it seems like the New York Jets have hit on all of their decisions except Zach Wilson. And to the New York Jets credit, they were very aggressive in building this team. After drafting Zach Wilson, they traded up so they could get him a brand new offensive guard in Elijah Vera Tucker. The very next year, they drafted Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, and Jermaine Johnson all in the first round. And that's before we talk about players like Brees Hall, who was a stud before he got injured. This isn't a knock on the New York Jets organization because I think the organization has done a phenomenal job rebuilding this team. Rather, this is more of a concern about Zach Wilson because his lack of accountability is apparently tearing the locker room apart. Now, there are some pieces of evidence for this, although it seems like some of his teammates have walked back the fact that they may feel some type of way about Zach Wilson. In the off season, there was a tremendous amount of hype for this young man, primarily because he ended up one of his mom's best friends. That aside, and all the funny memes about him having the dog in him, there was a bit of a concern for me with Zach Wilson's rookie season, but I'm not one of those individuals that'll automatically say, this person's a draft bust, because the NFL is a very difficult league and it might take some time for players to become acclimated within the NFL. It's more the mentality that is a little bit concerning to me. I mean, I see a little bit of Jay Cutler in terms of his mentality towards the game of football, especially whenever he's being asked questions that are supposed to essentially get him thrown under the bus and him not recognizing it. During his rookie season, his team only won three games when he was starting. Again, it's his rookie season. It's not like Trevor Lawrence did that much better or Justin Fields did that much better. Mac Jones looked the best out of all of them. Trey Lance didn't even play. He threw for nine touchdowns, had 11 interceptions, and had a QBR of a 28.2. By the way, he was also sacked 44 times. Now, bear in mind, when I saw his body of work during the rookie season, I thought that this this was just a situation that I just needed to develop a little further. I felt like the New York Jets got him more than enough weapons for him to succeed. His offensive line, although obviously they've been dealing with some injuries, is definitely trending upward. I mean, at least in the offseason prior to the injuries. Unfortunately, that hasn't shaken his way. But on top of that, the New York Jets have been investing so much in wide receivers even before they drafted Zach Wilson. A few years ago, they drafted Denzel Mims with a second round pick. Then the year after, they drafted Elijah Moore with a second round pick. Then more recently, they drafted Garrett Wilson with a top 10 pick. They also signed Corey Davis, who was a top 10 pick himself in the NFL draft to the roster. So I'm not necessarily saying this is the cream of the crop in terms of wide receivers, but you can't go out and say that Zach Wilson doesn't have weapons to throw the football to. He also has a fairly knowledgeable offensive coordinator as well in Mike LaFleur, Matt LaFleur's brother. Robert Sala definitely seems to know what he's doing on the defensive side of the ball. As a matter of fact, this defense has been carrying the New York Jets all season long. And I can't help but think, what if Trevor Lawrence was drafted to this team? Because although he definitely has had his miscues, I see a light at the end of the tunnel for Trevor Lawrence. I want to see a light at the end of the tunnel for Zach Wilson, but it continues to get worse and worse. During their last game, in Zach Wilson's second loss under center versus the New England Patriots, he had a brand new low in terms of his production. I mean, this game was bad from a multitude of angles. If you just looked at the stat sheet, Zach Wilson, 77 passing yards, 40. 0.9% completion. Now, to his credit, his previous game against the New England Patriots, he had a 48.8% completion percentage, threw for 355 yards, two touchdowns, and three interceptions. But it gets way worse. I mean, there's footage of Zach Wilson just hitting the internet of him just making truly horrific plays that are very, very concerning. I mean, these misses are throws that I'd expect anyone from the NFL level to be able to make, like anyone, especially 
this throw to Braxton Berrios. But what was probably the most concerning that got me to make this video in general is the fact that this man posted a video on Zach Wilson that was intended for Tyler Conklin. Now, the concerning thing about this isn't the fact that Zach Wilson misses Tyler Conklin for an easy first down, but he literally airmails it and that should have been an interception and he's lucky that it was not an interception. But this is a brand new level of bad. It's egregiously bad. And the concerning thing about this is the way the New York Jets ended up losing, don't get me wrong, was a heartbreaker, a punt return touchdown. Definitely sucks, especially when your defense has been doing a phenomenal job the entire game. But probably what made this situation so significant is following the game, Zach Wilson was asked if he felt like he let his defense down at all. And his response? Oh my God, his response was horrible. As an offense though, I mean, when you guys are only able to score three points, the defense only lets up three points. I mean, do you, do you feel like you let the defense down at all? No. No. Zach. I don't want to say this could have all gone away, but you could have potentially bought yourself some time if you answered this properly. Saying that he didn't feel indebted to his defense at all set off a series of tweets and made him a very popular subject on Monday morning and on Sunday night. Because Jordan Lewis of the Dallas Cowboys quoted this tweet of the footage of Zach Wilson missing a wide open Tyler Conklin saying, you don't owe your defense at Zach Wilson. But you know what's even more significant is at the time, Sauce Gardner, ended up liking this tweet. It wasn't only Sauce Gardner, by the way. Jonathan Franklin also happened to like this tweet. Now, they would backpedal and say this was an accident. Sauce saying, I swear I didn't mean to like this tweet. I only found out because y'all started tagging me. We gonna be straight. If I liked it purposely, I just wouldn't have said anything. I always mistakenly like tweets on here, but y'all made sure y'all caught this one. Y'all toxic on here. Now, John Franklin Myers at Jets Twitter. I ain't mean to like that tweet. We got faith in Zach for sure. Y'all stop looking for problems. We got seven games left to ball. Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to come here and stretch out the fact that, hey, baby, Sauce Gardner actually is upset. If he came out and said it was an accident, I'll trust him that it's an accident. But that's not the only issue we have. According to Rich Mini, hearing this morning, there's a lot of raw feelings between the Jets defensive players. Clearly, Zach Wilson's post-game accountability or lack thereof didn't sit well. I don't blame a man. I mean, when Zach Wilson is missing throws like this one to to a wide open Denzel Mims, bro. He was wide freaking open in the middle of the field in the end zone. He even looks at him while he is already behind the defender. I don't know why Zach Wilson would look at a wide open receiver and say, ah, I'm not gonna throw it there. But this is without a doubt a little troubling. Now, Connor Hughes also has a commentary on this. This is now posted on Bleacher Report. Zach Wilson frustrated some with the Jets by acting like he isn't the problem. Sources inside the Jets losing locker room told SNY that Wilson was walking around after the game like he isn't the problem. It rubbed more than a few the wrong way, frustrating several others. Those feelings are notable, especially since Wilson said no when asked during his post-game press conference if he felt his play let the defense down. I think you have to take into account it's windy as hell out there too. Guys, he added, are you kidding me? That is by far the worst excuse I think I've ever heard. I mean, yeah, if it's windy, that's one thing, but there were multiple throws that this man just missed that he didn't even an attempt. Now, Hughes also mentioned that Denzel Mims and Garrett Wilson each snapped at the quarterback following poor passes in what was New York's fourth consecutive loss to the rival New England Patriots. Now, look, man, this isn't supposed to be a video where I try to say the New York Jets are doomed because they're not. They're in a great situation. They have a stacked defense. Unfortunately, the development of their QB is way, way behind where their defense currently is. I mean, if you had Zach Wilson clicking on all cylinders, this team could potentially be a Super Bowl team. And unfortunately, it doesn't seem like that is the case. I mean, to give you an idea of how bad Zach Wilson has been over the past couple of games, we'll compare him to another former first round pick QB. Zach Wilson through seven games this year has four touchdowns, five interceptions, and a 55.6% completion percentage. Johnny Manziel in 2015 had seven touchdowns, five interceptions, and a 57.8% completion percentage. Now, this isn't to say Zach Wilson's the next coming of Johnny Manziel, but this is definitely a fantastic way to lose your locker room in a very short amount of time. When your offense
offense is mad at you and you're not giving credit to your defense that literally locked it down and held it down for the team then obviously you're in some trouble originally i thought okay it's not a big deal zach wilson had a very questionable post game interview after having one of his worst games of his career maybe i'm blowing this situation out of proportion and a part of me was actually feeling this way because when i made a video on elijah moore and denzel mims demanding a trade a lot of jets fans got mad at the comment section when i suggested a reason why they could be upset is because zach wilson hasn't necessarily been playing so well he hasn't been playing horrifically up until that point but he hasn't necessarily won the jets games and it looks like his post game conference was the straw that broke the camel's back because according to adam schefter andy and rapaport jets head coach robert sala told reporters that he's not committing to quarterback zach wilson as his starting qb for sunday's game versus the bears wow okay and here we'll also show you the ian rapaport tweet as well for the first time jets coach robert sala left the door open for a qb change saying all options are on the table zach wilson has been informed that his job is up in the air i was actually a couple hours late to his press conference while he had meetings with his coaches with his uh, staff basically everyone to talk over what they're going to do at, at the quarterback position. That is how important a decision it is. They have Mike White, they have Joe Flacco, could actually be either of those guys, or it could be Zach Wilson. We will find out later in the week, but clearly the Jets mulling a quarterback change. Do I think that this is the right decision right now? If it was a question about Zach Wilson's on the field play, then I would say this isn't the right move. But I think this has more to do with Zach Wilson as a leader in addition to his on field play. I mean, here's a good example. I mean, not necessarily the best example, but Trey Lance, he's had a rough start to his career as well. Granted, we have a significant smaller sample size to see Trey Lance play out of but in one of his first games in the NFL he definitely didn't have one of his best showings and when he was asked during a post-game interview how he felt about his performance this is what he said uh, I tried to throw a perfect ball so just put it right on him and he was wide open uh, turned the ball over took a sack uh, that knocked us out of field goal range that I shouldn't have missed Debo on the third down um, it's another third down to Juwan just too many mistakes. Uh, a lot of stuff to clean up for sure for me. Um, but man, excited. Still got my head up. Excited to, to get ready to go next week. I mean, it's not necessarily hard. You see quarterbacks do it all the freaking time. You have a bad performance. You blame yourself. You give credit to your teammates. And that's about it. You want another example? While well, we showed you the number three overall pick taking accountability for a bad game. Here's the number one overall pick in that same draft. You know, being, being the quarterback and have an opportunity to go win the game and you don't get it done that's really really disappointing and frustrating and i gotta look in the mirror and um i gotta play better you know there's there's that and there's the the goal line interception and um, there's a couple plays I really want back. That sounds infinitely better than what Zach Wilson had to say. Do I think Joe Flacco would be a better quarterback instead of Zach Wilson? I'm not necessarily sure. He did have that incredible come from behind victory earlier in the season versus the Cleveland Browns. What I want to focus more on is how his team currently feels about him. And according to Robert Sala, it seems like my initial analysis about the problem with Zach Wilson is correct because I just got this interview sent right to me as I'm recording this video and this is what Robert Sala had to say about Zach Wilson obviously we you know it's football is an emotional game and I, I I'm not gonna uh, shy away from the fact that I do think he is the ultimate competitor he wants he he, he wants to win just as uh, about as much as anybody um he works as hard as anybody it, it means so much to him um can he be a little bit better in front of the in front of you guys and when he's up here on the podium and in terms of the expectation that when you are standing in front of the podium, it's it's our job to to take bullets and and own it, uh, especially when it's time to own it. Yeah, he, of course he can, but I don't I don't think it's indicative of uh, how he feels about his team or teammates, and I don't think he is naive to the fact that you know offense wasn't didn't play to the best of their ability while the defense is out there, Paul. That's I don't think that's what he was trying to to convey. I really don't. But um, but yeah, he, obviously he can be a little bit better, but. Um, 
uh, and I, I think he'll be better for it. So this video is going on for way too long. I didn't expect it to be this long. As a matter of fact, we may need to push it off an extra day because of how long it went. But I want to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you think there's any hope for Zach Wilson to be a franchise QB? Do you think people are writing him off way too quickly? Do you think he's a lost cause or the organization isn't a right fit for him? I like to hear what you have to say. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.